Imposter syndrome is a bit of a misnomer, and I want to discuss today why you may actually just be bad at art. No, you're probably not bad at art. There's... <laughs> <coughs> Welcome back to the Art Club. Today, we're going to be discussing imposter syndrome and why I don't believe it's a real thing. And it's actually a bunch of other little things that can absolutely be tackled fundamentally. And all of us can finally put to rest the stupid idea that is imposter syndrome that often comes down to mentors not explaining to you how you should be learning art. First of all, what is imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is the thing that many artists suffer from. According to WebMD, imposter syndrome is when you doubt your own skills and successes. Imposter syndrome is when you feel you're not as talented or worthy as others believe, and you're scared that one day people will realize that. First of all, I went to DigiPen. DigiPen is a college designed specifically for working in film and video games. They have robotics and a couple other things that they specialize in as well. My focus specifically was in 3D art and tech arts. So that's my background. DigiPen had a rampant imposter syndrome problem. To be clear, this school is an incredibly difficult school to graduate from. If you know anything about DigiPen, there was a little while ago a video that floated around about DigiPen perpetuating crunch culture. This is an entirely different topic that is not what we're going to be discussing today. DigiPen is notorious for being a very difficult school. So why then do my friends who also graduated from DigiPen as artists feel unworthy of being artists? I have friends that got out of school with their degree and applied for a couple jobs half-heartedly or didn't apply at all because they felt like they weren't good enough. This says nothing about those friends. This is a fault of our education in general and how we dissect this issue. That is imposter syndrome. One of the common things that people with imposter syndrome tend to experience is the belief that you are not good enough to be part of the circle or environment you're currently in. Unfortunately, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but many of the things we're going to discuss, including this first doubt, is the result of an actual problem. This isn't unfounded. You're not hallucinating. You're not crazy for feeling that you don't belong in a circle. There is an issue with your art ability. Now, the thing is, is that issue might not actually be related whatsoever to the art you produce. It's nearly systemic into how you approach art in general. For example, your goal as an artist is not to reach perfection. Your goal is not to create a perfect piece of art. Your goal isn't to get lucky and stumble upon some kind of masterpiece. Your goal is to have a process that works consistently and reliably every time. And if you understand what that process is and you break it down and you fundamentally design it yourself, you will never have this question. So extremely little of art is luck-based. It's entirely process-based. Professional artists rule out guesswork. You can guess. This isn't to say you can't take a guess. If you have nothing to go on, a guess gives you something to pivot on. But your job is not to guess. Your skill level as an artist is entirely limited by the process you develop. When you stop developing your process, your skill level stagnates. When you don't understand your process, your skill level is a mystery. The more you do things intentionally and you take responsibility for what you're doing and you don't just let it happen, the less you will ever feel like you don't understand what's going on or that you don't belong. So fundamentally, this first part of imposter syndrome is a lack in understanding, and that's a real thing you absolutely have the power to do something about. Another thing people with imposter syndrome tend to experience is that they feel like they faked their way into the position they're in. They tricked everyone into thinking they were actually good at what they do, but secretly they're not nearly as good as everyone believes them to be. See, this is an interesting problem because feeling like you're in a position 
that far exceeds your current ability is actually the goal. That's not a problem. To ever grow in anything, art included, you need to be out of your element. You need to be out of your comfort zone. The more time you spend comfortable, the more time you spend in what you know, the less you will ever experience new things, the less opportunities you will have to overcome new challenges, the less chances you will have to fail and learn from it, the less chances you will have to meet people that are smarter than you, that can help you understand what it is you don't currently know about the position you're in. So you should always be striving to be in a position where you don't necessarily have all the answers. And where you can constantly grow and become a better version of yourself. So when you get a new position, you will feel vulnerable. You will feel out of your element. And you will feel like you are missing knowledge. That's okay. That's not imposter syndrome. That's actually just the realities of growth. If you're put into a position where you're expected to have all the answers, especially when you're just starting out, man, that's a red flag. You're probably working at a place you shouldn't be working at. Whoever's treating you that way probably sucks. And the thing is, you can just go, hey, that person sucks. I'm allowed to learn. I'm allowed to grow. And if their suckage gets in the way of you being able to do your job at all and being able to grow at all, you should pursue other positions. That's a red flag, man. You want to get into a position where you have people mentoring you and have people helping you grow. That should be your goal. Develop your process. And when you can't answer your own questions, there's no way to answer your own questions for everything. Let life give you the answers. Make a choice. Put an action out there. Wait a couple days and find out if it was the right thing to do. You'll get a definitive answer from life. Sometimes it will be that, oh, that was probably a bad decision, but I've learned from it now. Don't do it again. Or it will be that, man, that decision I made that I was super hesitant about, ended up working out in all of our favors, and I'm really proud I made that. And I'm going to think about how that impacted me in a positive way, and I'm going to bring it with me moving forward. Life can answer the questions that the people around you cannot. One of the things a lot of people I know with imposter syndrome do is they will give themselves a failing grade before their professors do it. They'll give themselves a failing grade before their leads do it. They often believe that their performance is worse than anyone is being honest with them about. Give people a chance and believe them when they tell you where you are is okay. Don't leave it up to them to define your growth path because every resource you have is only a tool for you to teach yourself. But trust the people around you not to lie to you. It's interesting too because this is like almost similar to the Dunning-Kruger effect in a way, your lack of knowledge leads you to jump to a conclusion about what you believe to be true far quicker than someone who has a lot more experience. And now I know this is not verbatim Dunning-Kruger. So just understand that this person with a lot more experience sees the process and sees the plan and sees development and goes, you're okay where you are right now. For all of these things, I understand that you probably don't. So when you're learning, trust in the mentors you believe in. Now, if your mentor isn't actually good at art and they're just lying to you, that's a whole nother story. And the thing is, when you're getting hired, especially just out of school or, or for one of your first jobs, most studios are more than aware of your current skill level and they plan on helping you develop it. They're not planning to have you come in and perform at top echelon. You have to understand a lot of these artists that have spent all this time working on their process and developing consistency and being able to repeat results instantly, they know exactly what your skill level is at a glance. There's no guessing. They're not being tricked. It's insulting to them to think they're being tricked. Uh, oftentimes, they have gone and like dissected everyone's art on the internet to an extreme level. For example... I used to go on art station every couple nights and I would go and I'd pick the best pieces of art I could find on the front page and I'd break them down step by step into how these things were created. And every time I did this, it helped me understand that this person has a process. I understand how they got here. 
and I understand in comparison how I could get to a similar result. And so when you show your art to an actual professional artist, they're probably not lying to you if they look at your art and they make a statement about it. They probably know where you are in your process at a glance if they have done these kinds of practices. And if they don't know, if they really don't understand where you are in art, especially if you are a student, you get hired somewhere and no one in your vicinity understands what it is you're doing and no one in your vicinity is reliable or someone you can trust to give you good feedback, that's a red flag. You probably don't want to work there. I know people who took jobs like that and it it was not good. Not having a mentor in your first job or someone who knows more than you that you can learn from is a surefire way to cease trusting yourself. And if someone hires you because they've seen your work and they like it, that's just what it is. Pixel artists. There's fantastic pixel artists. I've met pixel artists that are like some of the best pixel artists I've ever seen in my life. They do amazing 64 by 64 sprite work and they can't do an illustration from their life. So people hire you for different things and they might hire you for exactly what it is you already do and not for what you believe you need to do. And so don't forget that. What you are currently doing could be entirely valuable to someone and they just want that. And as long as you understand how to produce that and what their needs are, you're doing your job exactly as you're meant to. You should not feel like an imposter just because something else they're not asking for is something you probably can't do. The last thing a lot of my friends with imposter syndrome struggle with is the belief that everyone around them knows something they don't. If you find yourself guessing about art, there's something you don't know off the top of your head and you feel like you should know it. Ask someone. Reach out to an artist online. Most of them would be ecstatic to answer your question or help you out. Every artist I've ever met would love to give back in some way and would love to help younger artists kind of through the pains that they went through as they developed their processes. Reach out. If you feel like there's something you don't know, you should be able to ask the people who know it. There's no shame in asking questions if you're pursuing growth. There's this weird idea between artists that if you don't already have an answer to something, it's because of your skill issue. But the thing is, is the reality of art is that it's a constant engagement of learning and in constant engagement of asking questions and in constant review and reflection of your current skill level. Ask questions. Strive to grow. In fact, it's something that a lot of people find really meaningful. If you feel like there's something you don't understand, point it out and be like, hey, this is something I'm struggling with that I feel like there's more to. Could you help me break this topic down and go over it so I can be more consistent with it moving forward? Do stuff like that. Reach out to people on ArtStation. Reach out to people on LinkedIn. Ask them simple questions. Some people might even be willing to do one-on-one -on -one video calls with you. If someone's cool, you could ask. Be respectful of their time. A lot of artists really like their space and like to focus, so keep that in mind, but they will be more than happy to answer your questions. Find the knowledge you feel you're missing. It's there. Imposter syndrome is incredibly misleading because what it is is a skill issue. It's a skill issue that has to do with you misunderstanding the process of growth and art. The inability to reflect and compare yourself and what it is you do to your goals. And that's a real thing. That's a real thing you can do something about. That's not a feeling you have that's mysterious and haunts you. The thing is, as an artist, you can never test yourself against hypotheticals. You can never test yourself against your potential. You need to put yourself in a position where you can apply your skills. This is the only way you're going to be able to grow. And this is the only way you're going to be able to fill in the gaps and address truly where your skill level is. If you're too young to apply your art to something functional, what you can do is you can find the best artists 
of the best, the best in their class, the best in their genre, the best in their discipline, and you could study them. You can find the elements that go into art. What are the elements that make up art? So for a 2D artist, you have form and silhouette, you have shape language and perspective, there's line work, there's shading, there's environments, there's lighting studies, there's material studies. Those are all steps in a process that an artist has probably intentionally engaged, not luck, but considered throughout the design of the piece of art they have created. So that's a number of things in bullet points you would need to do to create that piece of artwork. Under each of those categories, there's another sublist of bullet points for shading. It could be, how does this artist approach their shadows? How does this artist approach their midtones, their highlights? How do they frame lighting in regards to form? What are the literal steps if I were to make a guide with bullet points on how you can recreate this person's artwork from scratch without guessing? Eventually, if you do this enough, you'll be able to create your own versions of these processes where you're no longer referencing theirs, but you're developing your own. And when you get to a point in your bullet point and you go, hey, I have to guess about this. I don't really know how to get the result I'm looking for every time. Start over from that section and build a process step by step that works for you. That's intentional, something you're aware of and something you can use to get the results you're looking for every time. Lastly, if someone is in fact compelling you to make bad art and they are actually lying to you about your current skill level, you'll be able to figure this out on your own when you start developing your process and this will no longer be a problem for you. Because art, as it is, is something you teach yourself. Unfortunately, this is kind of a hard pill to swallow because a lot of people don't really want to be responsible for their current position skill level, whatever you want to call it. But the reality is, is that every resource you ever have, whether it's going to college, school, your mentors, your peers, are there for you to help you teach yourself art. And you need to be objective and understand where it is you are and where it is you want to be. No one else can do that for you. No one else can teach you that. That is something you need to figure out. And it's just another process with steps and bullet points. And you'll never have to guess again when someone's lying to you because you'll know <laughs> they're lying to you. So at the end of it all, you don't have imposter syndrome. Your imposter syndrome isn't real. Rejoice. Feel the warm air of elation. There's no imposter syndrome. There's legitimate thing you need to work on. <laughs> I wish it was more simple than that, but the more engaged you are in your own process, the less you will even consider imposter syndrome. Okay? So, I would love to hear your thoughts on this as well. Drop a comment if you've experienced imposter syndrome, if you feel like any of this is true to you or your friends or your peers, anyone you've had experience with in the past. Tell me your own stories as well. Maybe help some other people out in the comment section on how you got over imposter syndrome. If you would like more tutorials, more art advice, more discussions in general, please subscribe to my channel, The Art Club. I do all kinds of things. I am a new channel, so we're still figuring out what those things are. If you agree with the video, please leave a like. If you disagree with the video, feel free to dislike it. It's all up to you and share it with artists you feel like can use this information. Together, let's help artists get out of the muck. It's a hard time in history to be an artist. It's confusing. There's a lot of weird things going on. We didn't think we'd have to consider it all. Going into these careers make us question the very fabric of reality itself sometimes. To recover from those things, let's let's get these discussions going and and you know screw our heads back on. Anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate you all, and I hope you have an amazing day. Peace out.